Good morning, peoples. November the 23rd. We're three days away from Turkey Day. Gobble, gobble, gobble day. Um, that's a holiday that never meant anything to me as far as, I mean, I know we're supposed to give thanks, but I don't think anybody really does, including me. Um, it was just a chance to eat turkey, and which turkey is a little bit better than chicken, has a little bit more flavor. Um, but it's not all that. I mean, it's not bacon, all right? Um, stuffing, which is just pure carbs, right? But delicious, yummy. And mashed potatoes, which really you can, every time I cook a steak here, I make mashed potatoes. I mean, that's, and the, uh, <laughs> the congealed cranberry flavored gelatin crap in a can that's one of those weird things where when I started cooking, one of the first things I did was make a recipe, you know, off the internet or out of a magazine or wherever I got the recipe. I don't remember when I, because um, I started cooking actually before the internet was like it is now. You know, YouTube might have been around, but it wasn't like like it is now. <laughs> you know, number one in everybody's life, and I made like real cranberries with like orange peel or orange zest in it and stuff like that like a real fancy recipe stick your finger out when you're drinking your whatever what do you drink apple cider uh and it's, it was terrible it tasted god awful and the next year i went out and bought the can of crap that i grew up with now maybe because it's loaded with sugar and i'm a sugar junkie fiend uh maybe because it's what i grew up with but i like those congealed slices you know, um, cold with the hot turkey and gravy that day, and even better, you make a sandwich the next day, and you put mayonnaise down on some bread, sourdough bread, it's my favorite, put mayonnaise on your sourdough, put cranberry uh, slices, two of them, you know, pretty thin, uh, on the bread, and then you put leftover turkey uh, and stuffing and gravy. Oh. That's a hell of a sandwich. So for me, Thanksgiving was about the food and the people getting together, friends and family uh, over food, uh, like a tailgate. For, you know, it wasn't really ever a holiday holiday. So being over here in Thailand, I don't miss it, but I do miss the food. Uh, that place I talk about a lot now <laughs> since I discovered it in Chiang Mai, Rimping. You know, is there uh, turkey in pie? Hell no. Is there turkey in Chiang Mai normally? No. But Rimping has imported a bunch of butterball turkeys from the U.S. just for Thanksgiving for all the expats. So I, I plan on acquiring at least the breast, if not a whole bird. The problem with the whole bird for me is, well, even though I own a restaurant, we don't have a stove in the conventional sense of the thing. We don't have an oven. We have three gas burners and we have a small toaster oven. We don't have what every American home has, which is a, a full-size oven. You could put an eight or 10 pound bird in. So I might just get the breast because that will fit in our bigger toaster oven. We have two toaster ovens and the big one will, will hold the breast, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, the food, that's, that's really what I, what I want. And I don't think, well, you know, Rimping, I, I shouldn't say I can't get the cranberry crap in the can because Rimping will probably have that. They seem to have everything. I'm going down uh, the day after, actually. The 26th is Thanksgiving, and I'm going down on the 27th, uh, again, for a quick little three-day thing to Chiang Mai. So November 23rd, we're three days away. Don't try to cure a headache. It's better to cure the thing that caused it. If you have a serious medical problem, by all means, see a doctor. But also keep in mind that many of the ailments for which there are thousands of over-the-counter remedies are caused by things you can control. Headaches, an upset stomach, muscle aches, leth leth lethargy, lethargic being like uh, and the and the like are signals that you are ignoring your body's needs or your mind's problems. Yeah, a lot of that shit is caused by uh, poor diet. Uh, consider, I, I know firsthand, <laughs> consider carefully whether you're, you've been putting off a worrying issue that causes you tension. Wow, there you go. 
Ask yourself whether you're getting the exercise your body needs to stay trim and energetic. As with any adversity, it is important that you act right away to understand the source of the problem and work to correct it. Once you do, you'll find you have more enthusiasm and vigor to pursue your definite major purpose. Well, that's the first I've heard that phrase, your definite major purpose. But I like those three words. That kind of sums up, you know, everything we've been talking about. Make a plan, make it specific, right, in writing. And it's major purpose. It's your, your why, people call it, the reason that, you know, you're not just taking a nine-to-five job if you're an entrepreneur. And uh, I also, like, he kind of tied it in, you know, a couple times I've questioned why is he talking about fruits and vegetables in a, in a positive mind book, in an entrepreneur book, a business book. And the reason is he just tied it in for me, and I, I guess I kind of sort of figured it out before, but really he just made it crystal clear. Um, you solve health issues the same way you solve business issues, which is solve the problem. That was the first time he used those words. And the light went on for me saying, oh, okay, cool. It's, it's solving problems. That's what we do. That's what we get paid to do, to solve problems. So that makes sense. You know, if you're experiencing any of those uh, symptoms he talked about, that's a problem. And you need to solve it just like you need to solve cash flow problems or equipment problems or vendor problems or any of the myriad uh, other problems that come up when you're an investor uh, slash entrepreneur. So, cool beans. Uh, he, he brought it around for me. Yay, Napoleon. Um, so, that's it. Um, like I said, we're going to Chiang Mai in, what, four days? So, I'll be, you'll, you'll miss the green screen for three days. I'll eat like a bastard. Wagyu beef, I got Wagyu beef on, on the mind. I was there for six days for Loy Kratong, the festival in the beginning of this month, and somehow, some way, I didn't get <laughs> the Wagyu beef. <laughs> I was like dreaming about it, right? And I didn't go there. I, I did a bunch of other places, but, and my girl didn't feel good for a couple of days. And we were only we were there for six, and for two nights, she wasn't feeling that well. So we ate local, we actually had KFC, and it was god awful. They put uh, Popeye's chicken, is, which is great, marinates their chicken in buttermilk with hot sauce, right? So the spice is built into the meat and soaks into the meat overnight, 12 hours, whatever, and it's cooked right in. In Thailand, KFC, they don't do this in, in the States. They make their spicy chicken by taking crushed pepper, dry, you know, dust, pepper powder, <laughs> like curry powder, pepper powder, and just sprinkling it on the fried chicken like you would sprinkle, you know, salt. It was disgusting, it was dry, powdery. Um, one time I had ribs uh, at uh, Sticky Fingers, it's a franchise in Jacksonville, and they had a Memphis style dry rub. And it literally was just ribs cooked and then they just sprinkled dry rub on it. It was fucking gross, it was like eating sawdust. And same thing with the KFC, it was terrible. It was the worst chicken I've ever had. And she gobbled it up. She absolutely loved it. And was smacking her lips and going, mmm, KFC. I'm like, I don't, get, I don't get this girl. You know, I bring her to like nice Italian places, and you know, eating really good Italian food. And she's like, mm, nah, I don't like it. You know, she doesn't. I made stuffed shells. You don't like it. I don't like cheese. But you like sawdust chicken from KFC? Okay. Different strokes for different folks. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's what's on deck. Is uh, is Chiang Mai, and uh, I'll still be looking for a guitar store um, down there. Like I said, I've narrowed it down to near the university. I've called a couple people. One guy wanted forty thousand baht uh, for a three-story that included apartments above. And number one, I really don't want to be a landlord. And number two, I don't want to spend forty thousand baht a month. I'm doing that here, and it, no bueno, especially with COVID. Um, you know, even with the crowds that we had in the holidays, you know, we didn't do enough business to support that kind of overhead. So I want to keep the overhead low. I will find a place. Just got to stick to it. Um, it ain't easy. You know, uh, my boy Kyle Pasquis says flipping ain't easy. And he's, it's, 
being an entrepreneur in general is not easy. If you think it's easy, if you think it's easier than nine to five, you're sadly mistaken. It's it's hard work. But that, that don't scare me. I'm used to it. I've done it my whole life. I'll, I'll do it here too. Now, once I get the store set up and we have a manager running it, once we get this place profitable and somebody running it, then yeah, that I'll be more retired in the true sense of the word, sipping my mango drink, sitting poolside in my little rented villa. So life will be good sometime in 2021. I just don't know when that's gonna be. It's not right now. I got work to do. So it is what it is. Keep grinding, guys.